Uh, thank you, Michael. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I guess I'll go back. I asked Mike Houghton, do we already recap the Oklahoma State game? It's been, seems like that was a month ago, but um, going back and uh, kind of thinking through that game, uh, just uh, really, again, compliments to, to the Oklahoma State team and Coach Gundy. His staff is really a tough, hard played game. and. Uh, back and forth there in the first half and then just really proud uh, of our players to finish the game the way we did uh, kind of just flipped the script in the second half where we had kind of struggled running the ball in the first half on offense and we weren't stopping it on defense and then everything just reversed um, I really thought we executed well in the second half ran the ball great for like you know somewhere around 300 yards and uh, you know, uh, Samaje had a huge day. Uh, Joe had the big run. Uh, defensively, we limited them to three points and I think 30 yards rushing. So that, you know, to me was a key part of the second half is being able to play the run uh, better and, uh, you know, be where we needed to be, made some, you know, just really it's just getting on the board and our players understanding where they needed to be and uh, making plays when they had the chance. Um, uh, Baker again throwing the football in the rain just like at West Virginia uh, 13 of 19 and five of them were legitimate drops, you know, he just threw the ball so well and uh, You know made made big plays Didi had the one big touchdown. So uh, just really solid. I thought overall um, You know kicking game, you know uh, good and you know for the most part and uh, Good solid win, you know to, to win the big 12 championship in front of our fans here uh, in our stadium, uh, you know, we hadn't been able to do that before. It's something we had talked about a couple, three times during the week, and and uh, was really, you know, really great uh, to do that. And uh, now it gives us an opportunity to play in the Sugar Bowl against an excellent Auburn football team, uh, team that really, uh, in the last couple of weeks, you, you know, you look at them. They lose two of their last three to Georgia and Alabama, but they're playing without some of their better players. You know, their quarterback was banged up. Petway, their great running back, was uh, was banged up, and and so uh, it's really not. You know, doesn't tell the true story of of the quality uh, of football team. You know, there in those last few games, uh, they they're very. Good team, great running the football, uh, great defensively, you know, across the board, got excellent personnel, uh, play very aggressively and uh, do, a, do a great job, a lot of tight man coverage. And then offensively, you know, everything begins with their run game. Um, you know, a lot of motion and shifting, trying to get your eyes, you know, uh, in the wrong place. And they do an excellent job running the football. And again, very capable of throwing the football with a healthy quarterback. Got a great kicker, one of the best, uh, an All-American kicker. Um, uh, that also was a great weapon for them. So, uh, but exciting challenge, you know, going going to the Sugar Bowl uh, and, and playing down there in New Orleans and the whole Sugar Bowl committee, do, they do a great job with both teams and fans of taking care of everybody and, and uh, giving you a great opportunity to go down there and play in a great game. Uh, since Al isn't here, injury-wise, um, I feel uh, like everybody, I'm trying to thank everybody for the most part uh, that was in the Oklahoma State game is still back and and and, and ready to go. Um, I'm trying to think who would be questionable. Uh, will Johnson? I don't believe uh, will. Uh, we're not expecting Will to play um, right now. That's you know that's the situation. Is that an injury situation? But it's still the same. You know, it's still the same one that he's you know uh, head injury type thing that he's still going through some protocol there and. I'm sure they'll, you know, they'll keep evaluating them. But I'm thinking, with this being the last game, I'm thinking they'll just, you know, wait till, you know, next year and get them further and removed from it. And Jordan Parker. Uh, Jordan Parker's okay. Uh, practicing, uh, we'll make sure he isn't contacted, you know, overall. But uh, but he he practiced uh, the other day when we were out there with a green jersey on, meaning. Let's do our, you know, let's avoid contact with them. But he was out there with everybody, feels fine. And Didi was feeling fine as well. Um, so we're, 
you know, hopefully nothing happens from now to then and they should be good to go. Bob, have you had, uh, is, it, is it a normal practice deal like in past years where you've had a chance to work with younger guys or yeah. experiment a little bit? Who stood out if you had We had, uh, well, the way it worked out, normally we would have had two last weekend, but we only had one on Saturday around recruiting. And then Sunday all the coaches had to go recruiting. So, um, uh, so we had one already. We're going to have one today at, from 1 to 3. And then Thursday we have one from 10.30 to 12.30, I believe it is, just working it around the finals where we don't, you know, there's a big, there's a gap in there where they don't, they don't, they're, they're free and don't have any finals. So, so we'll have those two and then we'll have Saturday, Sunday uh, where we'll be, you know, working those, uh, going against each other. A uh, little more like spring ball, we're competing against each other as opposed to just game planning. There'll be some game planning, but and we're doing that behind the scenes. But when we're working, it's a lot of work against each other to keep the tempo, keep the speed, and then uh, and then we'll have a regular Monday through Friday like game week uh, this coming Monday. That'll we'll we'll go through the week just like we're getting ready to play on a Saturday, and the players uh, will be uh, able to leave Friday after that morning practice uh, for a break and we'll meet down in New Orleans on the 27th, I believe it, yeah, the 27th, uh, to, tr to, to go to the uh, Superdome hopefully and get, a, get an hour workout when we get there as well. Bob, with uh, Baker, after the OSU game, had announced that he was coming back. Have you spoke to any of your other draft eligible players that have told you they're either coming back or? or well, I don't want to speak for them. We're, we're having some of those discussions here in the next few days. Um, you know, as that starts to happen, as uh, long as the players are okay with it, I'll start to bring that up. Uh, you know, maybe after one of the practices, you know, when, when if I'm available or, you know, we'll get it out to you once we're, I don't want to speak. It's a little too soon just yet. So um, we're, we're working through a lot of that this week. Well, you mentioned the practices. How big are these practices for the scout team guys, for the young players? Just oh, they're great. They're big, you know, and it's and it's amazing how you get out there, even in the first one we had, and and how much more improvement you see from a guy that's uh, just a year older, and it, you know, just anyway, you just see more consistency, and and uh, you know, so uh, it, it's big. You know, they get it's like an extra four or five days of spring. Uh, you've always been big on telling your underclassmen who are making that decision that be careful to maximize your value. That's that's always been your message. Are they just as receptive to that now as they, <coughs> they were? In the um, some are, some aren't, and that's kind of always been that way. You know, um, you know, some are wiser than others in understanding that. You know, to to truly get your value and just a, I know you've heard it before, but a, a very quick example is Jamal Brown had a second round grade and decided to come back to school, graduated and was the first lineman taken into draft. So he, he probably made, you know, eight to 10 times the money he would have made as a second rounder, which everyone says, well, that's really good money. Well, I didn't like what he made. And, and so since some guys have gone out and they're told to come back to school because they're not going to go in the first three rounds. And that just, you're not getting very good value for what you, you know, what you could get. How difficult are those conversations to have? Well, they're not very difficult because I'm not convincing anyone. I want guys to be informed. Don't go out thinking you're going to be a first, second rounder when they've told you you're not going to be because your agent or somebody of yours or someone on TV said you were going to be. Make an intelligent decision, an informed decision. You know, that's what, what I want now. And, and, you know, in some guys' circumstances, are different than others that they have to, you know, go out and that's and that, and that's okay, you know. But I just don't want guys making decisions on the wrong information is the biggest thing. How much Bob has has just knowledge about concussions changed the way guys look at that? <clears throat> um, I, I don't know how much just that. I think injury is always something that people, you know. But in today's world. You know, I, I think back to who was the great run, the running back that had an ACL, and he, if, go, uh, McGee and, and, and Gore too, McGahey, and he still went, went fairly high. But just that I think doctors and medicine so good anymore, it's difficult to have something that, that takes you out that much, you know. So, but I, I don't know how to answer that, you know. Um, I'm, you know, but injuries are always something people, you know, think but if you about. Have a guy that maybe is projected low. 
you know, lower rounds, and he's had a history of concussions. I mean, that well, again, I don't. Now that maybe you didn't have to in the past. Yeah, probably. You know, that's something that you know all levels are just more aware of now. And uh, but, you know, that may disqualify him even from them. You know, wanting to to take him. But much, I don't know. I can't speak for anybody. How much concern is there about guys concentrating on going to the pro versus them concentrating on the task at hand with the bowl game during the? It's game? always a concern. It's something that we talk about, and uh, you know, um, but uh, you know, and some teams handle it better than others. You know, overall, but you know, that's something that you know it, you try and keep them in the moment, and and let's finish this out you know, in, in the right way, and it's something that you'll remember forever, so uh, hopefully they can do that. Orlando Brown is named second team AP All-American. Now, some of the fans may not quite understand what makes him good because he's in the line and everything. From your perspective, what makes him that caliber of a player, and especially being a sophomore? Yeah, uh, talent, size, uh, his feet, his intensity, his toughness, his physicality. You know, he has everything, you know, and, and he's only going to get better. He's a guy that, you know, in, in a year or two from now, when he really, again, just keeps developing his body, you know, has, has all those attributes that are, you know, that make a guy special in the front line. Bob, when you have, uh, you have players in the past and, and players that have played for you recently that talk about, you know, the bond between those guys, it seems like Jimbo Elrod was one of those guys that really oh, yeah. tried to keep, you know, the, the – camaraderie of, of players of the past with with more current players yeah you think Jimbo was with everybody's class you know that's really how he was uh, and uh, so sad and we, we all send our condolences and prayers to the family and uh, but sure whenever we'd be at a golf function uh, whatever time we were alumni or, or you know guys were together he related with everybody you know you Guys that just graduated a year or two ago thought he was in their class. You know, that's how he was. He knew everybody, was close with everybody. One of those guys you couldn't wait to go see, you know, that, or you made it a point to make sure you bump into him and always positive, always upbeat, and uh, just, just terribly sad. Yeah. Bob Lincoln has had at least one opportunity. Uh, to perhaps become a head coach for the first time, has decided apparently to stay with you guys. Is is that a uh, for coaches who for, for coordinators who want to become head coaches at, at Power Five programs? <laughs> is being a play caller or a coordinator where they are? Does that put them on the same track as if they were to take a, a head coaching job at maybe a, you know a mid major? Or a, I, I believe so. When they're when they're doing as well as Lincoln is, definitely. Um, you know he'll as. You know he'll be on the radar for other major schools. Uh, I don't think there's any question. He's he's around a, you know, a program that's had a ton of success, and you know, and under an administration that shows you know great leadership. We're doing you know all of that is positive, and and he's getting the benefit of being around and experiencing all of that and growing in it and helping and supporting it as well. So I, I think you're, you're it's very fair to say you know that he'll he'll be on the radar for other top teams and schools and maybe much like Jai was to Joe, you know, uh, you know, being at Florida and having success there that we, uh, you know, even though I wasn't a head coach before, he, he gave me a chance here. How much can the, the process of going through the, the interview process for him help him as well? And I'm not sure if you went through that before you got the job here or not. I did a little bit, uh, not much, but I uh, had some and turned down some, but uh, it, it helps, you know, to a degree, but I, I 